Tenemos a David C. Jiwit, profesor y astrónomo que está con nosotros hoy en Negocios Televisión. Hi, David. Thank you for being here in Negocios TV. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Hello. Good morning. David, I would like to ask you about uh, the three ayatlas uh, we are waiting for the image of the of the NASA today. Uh, they are releasing some image. Uh, what do you think about three ayatlas? Uh, why is different to to other comets? I think it's not. So I think um, basically all of its measured properties are consistent with what we see in solar system comets. So basically, it's a small solid body that is uh, releasing material towards the sun because the nucleus is hot on one side and cold on the other. So it sublimates towards the sun. Material goes like that. But then the radiation pressure from the sun pushes the, the particles back away to make their comet tail. So that's exactly what we see in solar system comets. The special thing about um, Atlas is that it's the third interstellar object in the solar system. So before 2017, everything we saw in the solar system was going around the sun. But uh, now we have three objects which are simply passing through. They were formed somewhere else in the Milky Way, and they're just passing through the sun, and they won't stop. They'll go out the other side. So this is number three out of those three objects so far. Now, the reason that Atlas has a lot of attention is because a person in Harvard University ha has claimed that uh, Atlas might be an alien spaceship. That's why uh, Atlas is such a, uh, a popular subject in the news and elsewhere. But the evidence for it being a spaceship is not, uh, is not convincing. Uh, I would like to, uh, to ask you later about uh, AB Lloyd, but uh, I would like to ask you first about uh, the size, the speed of these three ayatlas. Uh, do you see any difference in, in this subject uh, about three ayatlas? Yeah, the, the, the speed of Atlas is very high. It's the fastest thing we've ever seen going through the solar system. So. Um, starts at 60 kilometers per second and then gets faster as it goes by the sun. But that's how we know that it's not from the solar system, because basically it's traveling too fast for the gravity of the sun to hold it back. So we know it's an interstellar object of some sort uh, because it's going so fast. The sun just cannot hold it back. That's one thing. The second question is, you know, how big is it? So the first estimates were it's really big, 15 or 20 kilometers across, or 20 kilometers in radius, I think people were saying. But um, we have measurements from the Hubble Space Telescope that limit the size to be less than, uh, I think it's 2.8 uh, kilometers in radius. So, you know, five and a half kilometers in diameter. And it's probably much smaller than that. I'm guessing it's about one kilometer across or even smaller. And again, that's not different from what we see in the, in the regular comets from the solar system. So our comets were formed near where the giant planets are, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And then they were scattered out to this thing called the Oort cloud, which is a big swarm of comets surrounding the solar system. And then some of them get sent back in billions of years after they formed, uh, and they become the long period comets. So we think the same thing happened for Atlas, but not around the sun, around another star. And uh, this object was lost by the other star, and it's been drifting between the stars for a really, really long time, maybe for eight or 10 billion years, which is twice the age of the solar system, twice the age of the sun. So probably it's been floating around the Milky Way long before the, sol the sun even formed. It's a really, probably a really, really old object. And this is almost certainly the first time it's been close to any star. The, the space between the stars is so huge, 
you can drift around for billions of years and you never come through a planetary system. It's a very rare event for um, Atlas to do that. So it's the first time it's been heated by the radiation from a star since it formed. And it formed a really long time ago, we think. Uh, and it's just been out there in the interstellar medium at a temperature near absolute zero, almost as cold as you can get. We have uh, a lot of questions about uh, these three ayatlas. Uh, we were talking uh, before about A. B. Loeb. Uh, you said uh, you were talking about uh, this scientific of, of Harvard. Uh, what do you think about uh, his hypothesis and everything he's talking about three ayatlas? It would be, I mean, I think it would be great, you know, it would be wonderful if Atlas really was an alien spaceship. That would be a fantastic thing. Uh, but, you know, you need evidence, right? You can't just like the idea. You need evidence to support that. Uh, but the evidence is simply not there. So Atlas ejects material to the sun. Um, that's what comets do. Uh, Avi uh, proposed that that might be due to the, the body firing rockets uh, to, to slow down, perhaps, as it passed the sun. But again, no evidence for that. You know, all comets do that. The material coming off from the comet is um, some mixture of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and water. And those are the gases that we see in other comets, so that's not surprising. The size is as I say, probably a kilometer is certainly not bigger than five kilometers. Uh, that's, again, very typical for comets. Uh, so not, none of the things that we've measured um, give any reason to think that this is different in composition or size uh, from solar system comets. So if you think this one is a spacecraft, then every other comet we've looked at is a spacecraft as well, and it just doesn't make any sense. So I think the evidence is simply not there. You have to have evidence to support an idea, even if it's a really intriguing, really nice idea. You know, you can't just believe things. You have to have the evidence to go along. That's what I think. And I think that's probably the consensus view. The trouble is that the news media will pick up uh, uh, spectacular ideas, right, like that. So it's like they're picking up shiny objects, picking up sparkly gold diamond things in in the ground because it's kind of fun it's a fun story but it's not really supported by the um, observational evidence well uh, waiting for uh, more news about uh, i would like to ask you about the nature uh, the nasa is releasing today some image of this uh, three yardless uh, what do you expect uh, from from the nasa what do I expect? I don't, I don't know what they have. I think it probably won't change the, the picture. I mean, we have a lot of observations already. We've used many, many telescopes on the ground, big ones and small ones. We've used the Hubble Space Telescope. We've used the James Webb Space Telescope. We've used other telescopes in space. Uh, we've used telescopes on spacecraft near Mars <laughs> to look at this thing as it goes by. Uh, and so we have, a, I think, a rather good picture of this body. Uh, so I think um, I'm not expecting the NASA announcement will make a, a, a big difference to the picture. NASA just has to do the publicity and, and propaganda. It's a big uh, organization that wants to be seen to be doing something. You know, the other thing I'd say is, if this was a spacecraft, you'd have to ask, why would it come through the solar system on this particular path? You know, if some alien civilization wanted to probe the solar system, why would they send this thing through so fast? And uh, it doesn't really go near the Earth, so they're not here to check out the Earth. Um, we've detected no radio emissions from this body, uh, so it's not signaling anything. So what? What kind of a spacecraft would, would do that? doesn't make any sense. And then, in addition, all of the properties that we've measured are consistent with it being a comet, just like other comets that we've seen for, you know, many, many uh, hundreds of years, actually. 
We were talking about uh, NASA, we were talking about uh, A.B. Loeb. Uh, you know that uh, Loeb said that, uh, that the NASA was hiding something. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about this? Uh, is it possible? Uh, any, is, anything is possible, but I think NASA is not hiding anything. I, I think NASA had um, a shutdown because, you know, the U.S. American government is not functional. It's a broken government. And so we had a shutdown where nothing was funded. So one of the things that was not funded for several weeks, maybe a month or something, was NASA. So the people who would normally do something at NASA weren't doing anything because they weren't getting paid. So I, I don't think there's a conspiracy here. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's just that the government was shut down. There's no, there's no reason to have a conspiracy. We're just talking about an ordinary comet going through the solar system. Uh, you know, the, uh, right now, America, as you know, is a very strange place, politically very strange. And there are many conspiracies and and it, it's, you know, 9-11 conspiracy and all, all sorts of crazy things going on. Uh, and we don't need to add another one for an interstellar object that's just passing through the solar system. So, no, NASA is not trying to cover things up. NASA is interested in finding out things and spreading information. And that's what they do, except... When they're shut down, they can't do that. David, and uh, the, the last question, uh, do you expect uh, something similar to three address in the, in the future? Uh, do you expect uh, a 4i oh, yeah. in the future? Oh, yeah. No, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> so um, we expect more of them. We expect to find them more and more quickly. So in the past, we had no examples because our telescopes were not that good. They're not that good at surveying the sky. But now we're getting better and better. Technology gets better. Astronomy gets better. We make science gets better. We make advances all the time. And a big, big telescope is going to come online in Chile uh, later this year. And it will be really good at finding objects like 3i Atlas. So I expect we'll have 4i uh, and 5i and 6i. And we'll have lots of them. And when we have a lot, we'll be able to describe this, these bodies as part of a population. So instead of focusing on one and then this one and this one, we'll have, you know, a hundred or something like that. And when we have a hundred, we can say much more than we can say when we only have one or two or three. So the future is bright. I mean, in astronomy, when you find one, you, you know it's almost always just the first one out of millions, right? And so we don't need millions, but we'll very soon have dozens and then hundreds that we can study and think about. Well, we're waiting for, to, waiting for the NASA today, uh, this image about uh, three Atlas, uh, waiting for more uh, hypothesis by Evie Loeb. Uh, David, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much uh, for, okay. for being with us in Authors TV. Thank, Thank you, you for asking me.